Hello, uh, my name is Amrita and I am a marketing student here at the university. Uh, my name is Lorna Stevens and I am a senior lecturer, associate prof in strategic marketing. Lorna has written a very amazing book called as the Rutledge Companion of Marketing and Feminism. What is the purpose behind writing the book? Um, I'm one of three editors. We have managed to pull together 30 chapters from scholars, marketing scholars interested in feminism, gender issues from all over the world. The second volume of Work Out of Feminism that we produced, first volume, came out in 2000. And I have to say, uh, it didn't go down particularly well at the time. Uh, there were three of us, we were done with the three witches. So we were kind of feminism and yeah. witchcraft were somehow lumped together. Is there something specific that you were trying to achieve by writing this book? Well, marketing is uh, a very masculine subject, or it had been, uh, although women were attracted, as you know, to study marketing, they had very few of the good jobs in marketing. But we weren't just interested in practitioners of marketing, and specifically women trying to make it in the marketing field. We were interested in the way marketing itself was taught, and uh, we felt it was very sort of masculine in its yeah. emphasis. And that we needed to, um, well, we speculated what would marketing be, marketing be like if we gave it more of a feminist perspective. And that was kind of the starting point of the first book. Let's introduce some feminist ideas into marketing, critique and deconstruct the sort of macho discourse in marketing and see what we would put in its place. So do you think there is more representation of women in marketing now as compared to the past several years? I think it's certainly getting better, yeah. There are some things that still persist. Uh, I mean, if you pick a particular um, industry, for example, uh, like advertising, there's still a gender imbalance there. The kind of um, the fun, creative roles still typically are yeah. held by, by men. The client relationship, account management type roles are often um, done, done by women. And that, of course, is because there's a perception that women are good at all of that stuff and, and men are the ideas people. For many people, that's the exciting part of advertising, you know, coming up with the creative ideas and what have you. Um, but it's, women have found it hard to make into that and there's been research done very recently that still shows a sort of gender imbalance there. Do you think feminism has changed in the past few years? But the biggest change, of course, has been the digital, uh, and you'll know about that as well. Digital related, but you won't know what it was like before. Of course, you've grown up with this, um, but that was a huge, a huge change. But issues of intersectionality as well. That you know how you know, background, uh, race, sexuality, etc., etc., how it impacts on people has meant that there are now multiple forms of, of feminism out there, multiple viewpoints to take account of the fact that. No person's situation is the same. Yeah. We now do have a multiplicity of feminisms to acknowledge the fact that there is no one size fits all um, for the feminism, and that's good because that then um, creates space for the feminism that is actually appropriate to a, a particular group of women, a particular community of women, uh, and it's not. This, here are the rules of how to be a good feminist. Never wear pink, <laughs> uh, you know, it is, it is uh, yeah, it's much more open to difference. In the book, we've certainly tried to, yeah, to, 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 to address that. Yeah. yeah, I think probably whenever we published uh, the book, the first book in 2000, people could have said, well, this is very much a white European perspective here. I actually studied. Uh, mass communication in Ireland. Then I went to, and I worked in, a, in an ad agency. And actually, the gender ratio in my class was quite nice. I had more few girls in my class than guys. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, in the ad agency, there were there were like seven men and just me. They actually mentioned that I don't understand why this is, and they actually went and hired two other females after me. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So, a bit of feminist activism. You know, if we can talk about you know, how far feminism comes and so on, um, I would say, well, it's come very far, but I mean, it's it's not something you can ever be complacent about. The principle of equality between men and women is not something we should be ever complacent about. 
you know, it's about respect and it's about um, equal opportunities. And if we become complacent because the system is skewed against us, we can very quickly be swallowed up by it. So trying to bring feminism into the classroom, um, one of the ways that you can do that is by, by having this sort of more activist kind of element to your teaching. So you would be sort of saying, let's look at uh, a particular scenario. And it may be a scenario that you haven't experienced, but let's look at this scenario and think about what's you know, wrong with it. <laughs> so in your case, you go into that area and say, hang on a second, I mean, I was in a classroom with loads of primarily females, and then you go into an alley and say, and you're this lone woman in a sea of men. Yeah. Um, and it's this sort of standing back situation, sort of thinking, okay, what is wrong with this? <laughs> and how might I change this? How do you maintain a balance between, and not a person who is complaining, but just asking something that is, or has to be in a certain way? I think that is tricky because, of course, um, I mean, feminism is still a bit of an F word, so to yeah. speak. Uh, you'll get people sort of saying, oh, so basically, we hate men. <laughs> no, we don't hate men. <laughs> Many men are feminists. It's about the principles of fairness and equality and equal opportunities. And it's nothing to do with being in a battle with men. It's about helping women, but it is also about making men aware of their privileges and as you did in that ad agency and saying, you know, is this fair? Well, it's calling out, you know, to use sort of a two sort of uh, you know, language, it is this calling out and, and just be developing more sort of critical perspective. I think that's true in the classroom as well. So it is our, our service to you is to give you an education so that you can hopefully get a really great grade in your masters, and then go on to find yourself a you know great job marketing. But we're also here, I think, to not just focus on that transaction, if you like. Education is about knowledge, and it's about questioning. It's about critique. It's about debate. Broadening our minds to things. You know, being educated in the, in the fullest sense of, of of the word. If you have a very instrumental view of what you're here for. You might say, "Well, I, you know, I just want to get, I just want to get, I just want to focus on what I need to do to get the grade I need in order to get the job I need." Or you see it as a great opportunity to take advantage of the fact that you're sort of with a diverse collection of people with different experiences, different backgrounds, from different parts of the world, uh, and you can debate an issue. It's about us not just sort of having this market perspective, which is very narrow. It's trying to have a more societal perspective and to think of us not just as consumers, but as citizens of the world. How much does the sort of the, the digital space, if you like, how much has that informed you or helped you develop your feminism or did it happen irrespective of the, um, the digital space? The digital space actually helped a lot because that's how I found out about feminism. I remember actually I watched a stand-up video from a comedian and then I went on the internet because he was talking about feminazis and that actually kind of offended me because I didn't have a broader perspective of feminism anyway. That's how I started reading about feminism mm -hmm. and then came the me to moment where I saw everything happening that kind of gave me a, some amount of courage to actually call out things that they are going wrong but then at the same time um, because we are much more exposed and much more closer, it also holds a lot of accountability on our fact. As in, I am a, I come from a generation of Instagram and everything, but I am as a as a woman, I'm still scared to just make my Instagram public mm -hmm. because I'm not really sure how the world will react to it. Mm -hmm. Not not so. I wouldn't say it's a very safe environment for women to practice feminism, but it certainly has gotten better and we can, there are other women that I talk to, there are other women that I get the chance to read about, which wasn't the case before. I learned about it from my mother, but she actually never told me about feminism. She just became a role model by doing things a feminist would do 
but she never came and talked to me right about that fact. On the internet, I see females talking about it, so it helps. But at the same time, it is scary to put yourself out there. Yeah. And I think on the internet, it becomes even easier for trolls because in real life, I don't see people coming up to me and saying that this thing is wrong or this thing I don't mm -hmm. like about you. Yeah. But on the internet, it also becomes easy for these people because they're just hiding yeah. behind. This is about everybody being treated with uh, respect and there not being distinctions made because someone happens to be born or a woman or happens to be born in Ireland. There shouldn't automatically be set privileges that go with being born a woman. Um, and it's somehow trying to kind of put across those principles of fairness and respect without doing so in a way that threatens their security. Equally, we have to remember that there are many men who are feminists who treat women with a um, great deal of respect. And um, feminism isn't just for women. I mean, I think that's interesting what you're saying about, you know, as a digital native sort of saying about the internet not selling this, being very, like a very safe place because of the you know, trolls and so on. But then you went on to sort of talk about women in the community, and I think that, that was a really important part of the feminist um, debate as well. It's how, how women can help women.